be talking to the one and only Mark Rain, Vice President of Epic Games. Good to see you. Good to see you, Adam. Um, so we just got a chance to see sort of what you're doing with Unreal Engine 4. Um, you're a man who knows how to sell those engines. So if you just want to say what is, what's the philosophical difference between UE3 and what this engine can do? Well, I mean, the big focus of Unreal Engine 4 is obviously the next generation, and next generation in so many different ways, in performance, in power, in capabilities, in ease of use. And so, uh, as you saw, we have the new Blueprints system is much more capable than Unreal Kismet was in Unreal Engine 3, and it's much, it's much wider, more widely adopted within the engine. It's now in the animation system, the material system, the characters, the level scripts. It, it, you can do so much more with it and so much more productive. And then, of course, on the, on the power side, the rendering system, which is doing just crazily amazing things with reflections, with physically-based materials, with real-world uh, lighting using IES profiles, which stands for Illuminating Engineering Society. I mean, the, these guys, <laughs> these lighting nerds create this profile. The light, the cone is this, and the color is this, and the... So there's a society that yeah. decides on light. How it, They basically decide how how lights are represented. They create these profiles. And so, you know, you can plug that, but you can say, I want a pro this profile light, and, you know, and there it is. And so now we can just... Bring those, just drop them into the world, and we have lights that look just like them, like they look in the real world. Drop them in the virtual world, and they look the same as the real world. So Unreal Engine 3, when I, when I, when I come see these demonstrations, I got the sense that it was an engine designed to kind of get around some of the problems that were in both the PS3 and the 360, which was you may not have had all the power you needed at all stages of the process, and that now we're looking at consoles that are pretty hefty both at the GPU and the CPU and in the RAM as well. Does that give you guys some freedom in terms of not having to deal with those workarounds? Well, I mean, I like to say we have a longer runway, but we also have a better plane. <laughs> okay. So, you know, a faster plane that could use more runway. And, uh, and so we're really excited about it. I mean, the one we can talk about is obviously the PlayStation 4, and the technology there is very similar to what we're developing on now. And they call it enhanced PC architecture, and that's great because it means that the same things we're doing on our development machines, you know, the artists and animators and everybody's doing on their PCs, the, those results can now come through the PS3 somewhat unfiltered. And, uh, and we can get great performance because it's all uniform hardware. Every PS4, I said PS3, but every PS4 will be the same, and uh, we can just do amazing stuff. With it. We're just really excited about it. Now, where do you sort of see the distinction? Because I see this too. We, we, we were watching the Unreal demo, both on a, on a PS4 dev kit yes. and on a, a very high-end PC, yep. with, I believe an NVIDIA 680. Uh, GTX 680. Yeah, a GTX 680. Are, are you guys really seeing much of a difference between the two? I mean, where, where, where's that distinction between the high-end PC? It'll probably be in price once it hits the market, but well, between the PS4 and, and the high-end PC. You know, I mean, game consoles, even when they're new, typically cost less than that graphics card. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, you, making a one-to-one -one comparison of them is kind of, a, uh, kind of a, uh, an illusion. But, uh, but we're, we're, we're just super excited. Like, the power is great. You, you saw how, how awesome the demo looks. And, uh, you know, last year we were running that demo on that PC, so we're pretty excited about it. Now, um, one of the most impressive features I saw of, of, of UE4 in the demonstration is what you're calling Blueprint, which really yes. kind of, I think, well, I guess it gives you a blueprint of everything that's happening, both graphically and with animations, all the way to button presses. Well, yeah, it's a visual scripting system, so it's the ability to instruct the game engine or a material or an animation or any other areas that it's hooked into how to do something, what to do, when to do, how to react to things that happen, and how, how to control flow, things like that. So it's, it's, it's as if you were writing a program, but you're writing it by bolting together these components and it's visual and you can see how they flow. And the amazing thing that we, we showed today was the ability to actually watch the flow as it happens in real time. So you could have two screens going, one screen, you're actually playing the game. He didn't really call it out, it should have been obvious, but he was playing the game in the editor the whole time. And while he's playing the game in the editor, another window of the editor is showing the execution of the, of the, of the blueprints at, you know, as they're going from node to node to node. And at any time he could stop, he could inspect, he could see, hey, what's the value? How much uh, red is here if it's a material? Or um, how fast is this guy moving? Or how big was this collision? Things like that. So it's just really, really powerful. And it's gonna allow a new level of ease of use and productivity here to four. Unseen? Here to four unseen, <laughs> listen to you. Very biblical. <laughs> <laughs> so how does that compare to what was available with UE3 and kind of the older generation of gaming engines? And it sounds like also this makes bug hunting 
much, much easier. Yes, I mean, again, that's all part of ease of use, making it easier for people to see how it's executing and how to fix things if they go wrong or if they've done something incorrect. Um, it's just a lot more capable than Unreal Engine 3. Um, like a perfect example is on that little spaceship demo that he, that he had, uh, the controller inputs are captured by blueprints. That was never the way before. That was all C++ code in the past and it had to feed into uh, feed in Kismet nodes. Now, that's all. He can customize the controls and how they feel and what they do. And it's just a, a lot deeper functionality, uh, deeper and broader, more things can, it can, blueprints can do a lot more things than Unreal Kismet could before. And when they and the things that they do, they have a lot more detail and control in them. And they extend to a lot more systems now. So you saw it's part of the animation, the state system for animation. Those go like they have just the best animation system you've ever had. So um, I, I, I I have known you for a long time. Yes. Um, I have always liked to joke that when I started out doing this in 1998. One of the games that I first started noticing was this thing called Unreal. Unreal. Uh, and, 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 and now, look where you guys are. I mean, did you guys really foresee the, the, the dominant position you have in the game industry? Was, was, was that what you were even aiming for? Or, or was it just this one game that could go from indoors to outdoors really easily? <laughs> I think we just try to deliver the best gaming experience for the customer, the end user, the player that we can. And we let the fans decide that. And in the case of games, it's the it's the players that play the games that decide how, how good a job we've done. And in the case of the technology, it's the developers that use it and do really cool things with it. So I think we just work really hard. We have the best people. I mean, we Epic is more epic than it's ever been. We have the greatest selection in town. We're up to 275 people now. So it's not there's not just one or two guys running the ship like there was back then. Tim wrote the, almost the whole engine. Now it's a massive team of really talented people. And it's the same on the games. And so uh, everybody just strives for excellence. All right, well, um, I can't wait to see the excellence as it comes out. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you so much, Hi. Adam.